call the meeting to order. It's uh, almost five o'clock. I would have entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of June seventh. As we forget why we didn't vote on them last time. I did not have a chance to read them all. But I have. I will uh, make the motion to move it up. I'll second. I have one correction. Lay it on me. Se second page, halfway down, road department report. Uh, second sentence says next on the list is wedging. It's not the culvert on Tobias, it's wedging Tobias. I see. Oh, uh, it's wedging to Tobias. You're not? We're covert over Tobias. Wedging to Tobias. Well, then let's make that change. So, so, it can, so you're not wedging a culvert? Okay. You're replacing a culvert over Tobias. Okay, replacing. Okay, so just take the little wedging off and then we'll be done. Yeah, that's great. Right. That's just as easy. Stay. Take it away. Okay. Uh, will we have the vote on that motion? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The minutes of June 21st. Uh -huh. And I, as you can see, I made corrections already on it, on the numbers, because remember I had double pay for a long mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's been removed. Yeah, I'll move for adoption. I'll second that motion. Okay, can I have a couple corrections? Second page, Road Department report. <laughs> First sentence, Mr. Gokanar reported that the list, which I believe is the last of the ditches to be mowed, has been completed. No, I got the list. <laughs> the list, list of, of ditches to be mowed has been completed. Okay, but you want to put last, it's fine. I didn't know there was a list, but I guess there is. It is mine, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> and uh, under cemetery, uh, second <laughs> second sentence, weed eating is the is next at the uh, Clifton Cemetery. We didn't we're not weed eating Glen Forest as well. Okay. This okay. last period. They did. Did he? Did he really? He motor on Saturday. Oh, well, we could discuss it's that during the actual <laughs> Well, he must have worked all night then. <laughs> Let's hold that. Uh, I'd like to vote. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Have we won? No. no. I'd like to call for the vote. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Welcome, Lamar. And Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee and Marilyn, it's not yet. <laughs> I think it's seven minutes. No, we're good. Yes. <laughs> we started early. Make an excuse for not being late. We have Carol Simmons. I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the uh, total amount of $61,549.98. From the general fund, $11,936.54. From the choir, $16,656.89. From cemetery, $16,889.33. EMS billing, $13,723.99. Road and bridge, $2,000. $343.23. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? I have none. I'll call the roll, please. Ms. Demuter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Uh, correspondence covering a range of subjects. 
We received application for Kingwood Solar Certification, which is a fat book. Uh, letter from the Ohio Power Siting Board on the same subject. Emails from uh, System Prosecutor Stephen Haller regarding sale of the firehouse. Uh, this block is recorded. The uh, Ohio Township Association called an action uh, and a note about um, ARP Act funding, which we talk about that fiscal officer or in business? Mm -hmm. In business. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> we got a request for a link to the township meeting. Did you follow up with that? I did not. But we do have the hybrid function of listening. That is, Mark has the capability of listening on the phone. Yeah, this was a, an, another citizen. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you only, have, you only have one person at a time. Uh, we don't have a conference. Well, let's... If we do, <clears throat> you don't know it. Under new business, let's talk about possibilities of a hybrid. What's the future now that we're familiar with virtual? Uh, invitation to virtual cost of poverty experience event. That's already happened. A uh, reminder of the CARES Act activity report. Uh, it's been submitted and certified. Good to know. Uh, a letter to ODNR from Trustee Mutcher regarding the Yellow Springs Clifton connector. Uh, there's a Green County T Township Association meeting announcement. A letter from the village manager regarding the BZA hearing. Public records request from Yellow Springs News reporter Carol Simmons. Uh, you said you got everything? Hold on. One. Well, stop for one second. Richard, did you respond to um, Josue? You said you were going to. No, I didn't. You didn't? Okay. I wondered if it was out there somewhere. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I, yeah, I had said that I was going to address something and I still wasn't in the mood to, to address something when that time came up. Okay, just wondered. I'm sorry. Uh, I missed this. Link to raise grant application, what's that about? The raise grant is the um, grant that the Clifton Connector Group is working on it's a seven million dollar grant from the state and it's due for a submittal before the end of the month i think it's like the 20th that's the reason that this letter was written earlier the letter earlier about the odnr i guess the grant comes from odnr i'm not positive about that but they asked for a letter from red, red letter one, of one endorsement all, what the yes, letter of endorsement from one and all and so I wrote one in addition to our check. Yeah. Green County Public Health Meeting Announcement. A letter of arrangement for the, that doesn't sound Don't right. That's it. That's what they call it. Okay. And I, uh, I, from the uh, Clifton Union Cemetery Audit. Right, and I'm, uh, I'm um, fixing the fact that I put 2019 dash and then 10. Mm -hmm. We're not going back 10 years. It's 2019 20. You could go to 2020, 2010. <laughs> Either way, I fixed it. Okay. Uh, letter from WDC group regarding the uh, the stone on the wall cracking. And we could make reference to that in non existent nuclear house report. Okay. Uh, and we received information from prosecuting attorney Hayes regarding the Purdue Pharma bankruptcy case. Uh, fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for tonight's meeting will be received. Fire department report.
Newport. Welcome. Yeah. We missed you last. Oh, that's very sweet. Apparently, we're going to miss you most of July too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In September. Uh, it's, it's, puts that one on here. Yeah. It's tough being you. I know. Yeah. Well, you got to burn off this vacation time yeah. because like I'm paid it. <laughs> Take off over here. Uh, since the last board meeting, there have been 31 EMS incidents, one of which was in Bath Township, and six fire incidents, also one of which was in Bath. The last two months, I think we've had six total calls in Bath Township, so I'm not sure. If everyone's just sneaking in and taking over on Terra 4, if they're just not calling. <laughs> so that's down substantially from our average. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, you guys have resolution 20. 2021-22 uh, for appointment of volunteer personnel um, and it's more formality than anything else um, it says Gavin Van Meter who <coughs> excuse me he's been an explorer with us for the last two years he lives in the township um, and he wants to transition to being a regular volunteer member and he also just passed his EMT class so uh, wow yeah so, so. he's a sharp young man uh, you're going to read the resolution? Uh, resolution 2021-22, appointment of MTFR volunteer personnel. Whereas the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire rescue department, and whereas Gavin Van Meter has completed all the necessary application materials, background checks, and interviews to be appointed as a volunteer for the fire rescue department, and Whereas Chief Altman has recommended the appointment of this candidate, whereas funds are available for the purpose of training and equipping volunteer personnel within the fire department's operating budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the above candidate shall be appointed to a volunteer position within the fire rescue department, effective July 7, 2021. I'll move adoption resolution. I'll second. Discussion? I have none. Uh, we'll call the roll. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, just a quick building update. The sign at the time I was writing this was going up. Uh, the sign is now up on the front of the building. <laughs> so, um, wow. <laughs> uh, I don't believe it's back there yet. Oh, uh, pretty tomorrow. Sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I do it tomorrow. Okay. Jason said. Okay, yeah, I, I think it took, the, took a little longer than they anticipated. To get and stuff up. I'm hoping that you didn't ask the sign people to put the multicolor options on every letter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was in my original request, but I believe that was value engineered. Value engineered. Out, <laughs> along with everything else that would make me happy. But uh, <laughs> no, I think it's just the last conversation I had with Dan Montgomery. There were just white things, white LEDs, standard background. Boring. I don't believe we'll change the colors on those. Okay. But now that we've figured out how to change the colors in the front of the building, <laughs> the old way. <laughs> the old way. I've gotten more comments praising the colored night lights than anything else. Well, I'm glad. Uh, that probably won't happen too often because it's, it's a pain to do. Um, but it looks nice. So uh, let's, let's not put that we're thinking, uh, in minutes. <laughs> Too late. Pride Month, Fourth of July, October will be pink, and uh, Christmas will be green and red yeah. like we did last year. And maybe if uh, Hanukkah and Christmas don't overlap, we can do some blue and white or blue and yellow. Though I think Casey Brewer, who's the one who's helping me put them up every time, would probably break my kneecaps if I <laughs> try and get him to do more than, than that. But anyway, so that's up, and that's exciting. It looks nice. So and everything's spelled correctly. <laughs> and now, if we have oh, this is eighty-one. <laughs> if now if we have any enthusiasm left, we can actually have an open house because we were waiting for the sign yeah. to go up. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, there's still people who are very enthusiastic about coming. Yeah, yeah. Even though I've yeah. offered to give people tours, they keep saying, "No, no I'll wait for the <laughs> open house." <laughs> they want, well, I guess now we know they want chicken wings. That's yeah. the deal. <laughs> well, we can have a chicken wing. Well, that. <laughs> At the end of your report, I'll bring that up. Okay. Open house. So chicken wing. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so at recent events, uh, we were in the Pride Parade with the ambulance and the fire engine on the 26th. 
And of course, the Independence Day Parade. Um, and then did the whole thing for the fireworks. There was some slight disorganization, but it all worked out in the end. Any missing fingers or anything? Uh, no. Well, at least not from our contract here, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all maintained everything, so. Have you had any discussion with, with anyone regarding the, uh, the alternate display uh, on Southgate or back behind? I mean, I've had people complain about it, um, but no one's ever been able to give us a, like the exact location. With the law uh, probably changing in Ohio, yeah. Unless the governor vetoes it. Um, it's going to be like a free-for-all. <laughs> Isn't there anything about a setback? About testing? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to actually you do a show. Move. This we, thing was like 20 feet behind people who were It's got to be permitted. It's got to be all the requirements. Um, the problem is the enforcement side of it. It's, it's not I'm, I'm, I'm not following. What's the alternate display? Well, about half an hour before Yellow Springs display, and all through Yellow Springs display, and probably half an hour after Yellow Springs display, somebody put on a very impressive fireworks display uh, at uh, the end of the end of South Gate, where it goes into Edgefield, and then back into the, what will be the new development, the new mm -hmm. overdevelopment. It was back in there somewhere, but not that far back in there. Because uh, I was in the IGA parking lot you know, watching the villages, and uh, I mean, this thing was like from here to Dan, you know, it would go up, and you'd go, please don't come this direction, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the law is. And they weren't little pops, they were. No, they, they were, were doing a size. serious. Yeah, they got some serious um, spent stuff some time there. and money on it. The law is really vague in a way because. It says if you're doing a show for money in front of an audience, that's to be permitted, fire department has to be there, there's only setbacks you have to meet. Um, it's not as clear as if you're just shooting off for yourself. You know, we all know that people apparently love to fire explosives into the air from their backyard, and um, so it makes enforcement difficult. Um, with state resources cut, the marshal's office, that is technically the people who are overseeing that, don't really have the resources to come out and enforce things as like they used to. So it's, it's kind of a conundrum in some ways. Typically they respond to complaints that, you know, someone blew a finger off or something, right? And then they'll come out and do it. Okay. You have to wait till, yeah. mm -hmm. until, yeah, until there's a problem. But if you actually knew who it was, <laughs> where it was, and, and what. You could make a complaint to the fire marshal without somebody blowing a finger off? Right. Or, yeah, or you know, knew what it is, we can make the complaint, the fire marshal would contact that person and try and verify they did it, and uh, we would work with them on that. We would probably tell them that in the future if they want to do a display, they have to get a permit, mm -hmm. meet all the requirements. If they're doing it for more than just themselves, then they have to be a licensed exhibitor, so they have to go to the state and take an exam, um, which teaches them all the setbacks, so that kind of thing to make sure that their mortars are safe and not going to fall over and launch into someone's backyard or the IGA of you know, Dollar General parking lot or something like that. So, uh, yeah, and then there's, I mean, there's no way we can support two firework shows on the same night. No. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no way. Not a current staff. But realistically, you know, by 9, 30, 10 o'clock on, on the 4th of July, if you have a, if you had, if you had a party at your home, with the intention of setting off fireworks afterwards, you may have imbibed perhaps a little bit during the day mm -hmm. and the oh, evening yeah. and the later evening and might not be quite as careful. Right, oh, certainly. I mean, that's a concern. Yeah, oh, certainly. Well, it's interesting. I chatted with the crew that did the fireworks display in Bone Park mm -hmm. and Talk about you know they they because of the perimeter they have to have it for safety they have to make sure that the that the fireworks go straight up and one of their big jobs is to make sure that anything that goes up that doesn't explode is located right right away sure. and dealt with because that's what's really dangerous mm -hmm. is something that comes comes back down again so there were a couple of things that they you know we just talked about how it, how it operated 
And they said, oh yes, the best thing is when you're doing it over a river or a bay or something, because you can shoot them at an angle away from everybody, and you know, it's very safe. And, um, so it, it's not trivial to no. do it yourself. The other thing that amazes me is I know how much, of course, you're hiring the people to do the work and, and everything else, but it's not cheap to do a fireworks show. No. As you say, someone's got some fairly deep pockets in there sending up that much material. Okay. Well, I just thought I'd ask. Could I make a comment? Certainly. Or, excuse me. I, I didn't know anything about an open house. I don't get to town much. So that's why I came tonight. I thought it was an opportunity to see this. Oh, it is. And uh, We'll be happy to show you. Well, I have to leave at 6.30, but mm -hmm. when, I don't know whenever the meeting. But it, we'll be done I just want to say it looks <laughs> nice. It looks great from outside. Any inside, too, I'm sure, what I've seen. Well, Congratulations to everybody. Uh, likely, the meeting will be over in time to give you a tour. It looks really, really nice, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to If Colin glad doesn't mind, when you're done with your report, would you mind showing the law around? I would have no problem with that. So. Okay, great. Is that all right, Lamar? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I can push you around the chair if you want. If you've got a long day or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> These chairs are all on wheels, so are the tables. You can take it with you. I'm sitting here and I had almost nothing to do with planning the building, and you were one of the people who well, it through. suffered through the long process. He wanted those chairs on rollers, let me tell you that. That was number one. I don't remember that, but they are nice. <laughs> Each one has your name on it, didn't you? <laughs> um, so, that, um, as already announced. So. I'll be in Columbus next week for the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association Conference, which apparently we moved to a Monday through Friday thing to make it easier for people to attend. Um, I probably shouldn't say this in public, but I can think of nothing worse than a Monday through Friday conference. <laughs> but as an officer in the association, I'll be there. As the president-elect. As the soon-to-be president-elect, I will be there to support my association. And actually, I'm teaching two classes, so there's that. But, um, it's not just your cheerful demeanor. It could be. But uh, sure. what, what classes are you teaching? It's the same class twice. It's a, what a class on topic. Uh, change in the fire service. So we'll see. Um, hopefully people are going to show up. The numbers are down. The numbers are down for all conferences. People yeah. I guess are still hesitant. Now we've gotten used to going to conferences again. Yeah. But it hasn't charged, uh, changed the, uh, the Hilton and Eastland from changing their rates to be, to be lower. They're still yeah, of course not. Oof. If you're free next week, feel free to register and stuff by the conference. Uh, and then I'll be on vacation uh, again, um, still July 17th through the 26th. But I'm here all of August. <laughs> I'm gone for a week and a half in September. So. Says 28th on there. Oh, I'm sorry, 28th. My eyes aren't really okay. Just checking. Thank you. That's, That's what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I forgot to put this on here, but just FYI. Um, you know, we switched last year from safety pad and firehouse to ESO. Mm -hmm. uh, we just switched from EMS manager, which was doing all our <laughs> scheduling, to ESO's scheduling uh, platform. So everything is now in one place for the guys. Uh, so they can schedule, and it also does their payroll. So they just clock in and clock out. Mm -hmm. And they can run payroll reports and all that kind of stuff. There. So that's good. Uh, one thing I figured out how to use the scheduling program um, to its fullest extent it would be perfect. But ESO is, um, for anyone that's familiar with the uh, Star Trek The Next Generation series, they're the Borg of software. They uh, see a company, they just buy them. They bought up uh, Firehouse, they bought Safety Pad, they bought some scheduling company, and this, you know, I thought it would be like our old one, which is just click and point, <laughs> like the Mac version. Mm -hmm. This is truly the Windows version where there are so many layers to this program. Yeah. You know, Dan and I spent two hours yesterday trying to figure out how to add someone to the schedule. <laughs> And then we found the shortcut button that was, I think so. But we'll get there. Um, luckily for the guys, their, their part is so much easier than ours. Um, stair climb, uh, put that on there just for your information. It's in Dayton this year, not in Antioch anymore. What happened? Um, we just wanted to grow the event bigger. And a lot of comments that we had come here on Saturday, and the whole world is in Yellow Springs, but apparently they don't want to come here for a charity event. So. 
plus, I mean, the uncertainty with the college and what the plans were for that building. Uh, at UD, they're giving us the arena for free, turning on the air conditioner, providing housekeeping, staff, and security all for free, advertising for free. <laughs> what stairs do they have? I mean, in the arena, um, up and down the arena. Yeah, it's pretty Please. surprisingly steep. Yeah. Um, so most climbs are arena or stadium climbs nowadays. So are they? Um, hmm. But the outdoors is a little less realistic. Yeah, I mean we're still indoor. But it's in the arena. Oh, it's in the yeah, arena. Yeah, in the arena. Oh, in, yeah, in a cover. inside. Yeah, the, the beautifully renovated UD arena. So I'm not familiar with the arena, I guess. Well, I hate to see it move out of town. Uh, just yeah, it's definitely changed some things for us. But hopefully, I mean we're behind the eight ball because we didn't get the okay to do the event from the foundation until mm -hmm. late May. Mm -hmm. Obviously, no one knew what the stuff was going to be. But, uh, the, we're hoping for a good year because the foundation took a serious hit um, in fundraising, like most places did last year. Yeah. There were usually 54 stair climbs that raised a million and a half dollars for them. Uh, wow. 18 stair climbs last year that raised 400. So, so. Yeah. And we're... I don't know how they made 18, but still. Uh, mostly in southern states that didn't have much COVID restrictions, <laughs> oh. basically, or virtual events, mm -hmm. which oh yeah, mm -hmm. isn't I mean, we. That's what we did, but it wasn't nearly as exciting. It's hard to raise money for a virtual. You know, their corporate sponsor was for a virtual. But anyway, yeah. uh, so there's that, and it'll be the 20th anniversary of the 9/11 attacks, which is yeah, that's right. Shocking and more shocking for me because several of my staff members weren't even born. Uh, <laughs> which, <laughs> geez, so anyway. Uh, but Most anyway, of my staff members weren't born yeah. either, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And Premier Health has come back once again as our title sponsor, so uh -huh. great. Yeah, we're very grateful to them. So. Sure. And then last but not least, uh, if you have a moment, I'd like, a moment, I'd like to meet with you guys in executive session about uh, matters of personnel related to personnel discipline slash hiring slash firing. Uh, before we do that, let's go back to the, what was brought up earlier about having an open house. Right. Do we want to go ahead and set a date and plan one? You don't want to? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'd love to show the place off. Well, it's going to be in August. He's going to be here in mm -hmm. July. You've got lots of events. You know what time of day to do it, and whether it's best to have food or just <laughs> tours or. Well, we and where will people park? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I've learned by lesson. I, mean, I, I would think uh, a couple hours, don't make it too long, Do. on More than a weekend. Time. Yeah, probably a Saturday late morning is usually like 10 to noon or something like that. Start off with an official type late to the game ribbon cutting type thing and then give people, I mean our original plan that Danny and I talked about when we thought maybe the sign might be here what, three, four months ago. Yeah. Was you know would be to do socially distanced tours of no more than ten and everyone masked up. I mean, now it's like free for all. We can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we still like to have tours. We don't want people just wandering aimlessly, particularly since certain doors are secure. And then you know, three days later, you find someone's kid mm -hmm. <laughs> still in the building somewhere. Um, but I, mean, I don't know if we want to do food or just have people come and look. Maybe get little fire hats and stuff like that. And it's got four hundred and fifty of them in stock. So <laughs> a little fire hats. Yeah. I did. It's like ordering a patch. I think yeah. something simple. Uh, we don't need food. True. But there are a lot of people who would like to walk through. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I, just, I, I think we just ask everyone to wear gloves. The best thing is to have as many of your staff personnel as available to stand by the featured items mm -hmm. and say, this is this does this, or, you know. Yeah. Because otherwise, the, you know, people are just going to be, what, what's that for? Well, we have... <clears throat> uh, in August, there's the 7th, 14th, 21st, and on the 28th is the Clifton Music and Arts, so that's not a good time. <laughs> 7, 14, 21. Uh, somewhere in there also is the Villages, which we're co-sponsoring, Touch a Truck event. I don't know what name that is. I'd say the early better. Touch 7 might be the county fair, but... Yes, I was yeah, no, just thinking... You're right. I don't know how many people from the Yellow Springs do the county fair if there's no car. Uh, it would be the last day, wouldn't it, though? Yeah, yeah. it would be the I last day there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you do 14th or 21st. 
you know, but in terms of the fair, if you're doing it in the morning, you're not competing a lot with them. That's the thing a lot of them. Well, what we could say the 14th, and what do we need to check in terms of conflict? At 10 in the morning? Or? I mean, if we want to go at 10, I can't think of much of a conflict. Unless Dave Chappelle's going to do a morning concert series. <laughs> okay, 10 to 12 on August 14th. Details to be determined. Details to be detailed. Yes. Uh, well, to go into ex executive session, we would need a motion. So move matters of personnel, discipline. I'll second. Okay. Vote is on yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll uh, be right back. We have no no action that we're taking. So that's the end of the fire report. Unless there's questions. Okay, unless there's more that you want to go on. No, well, we we could. Otherwise, I have a pressing uh, a pressing engagement. Well, we could add the, the non-new firehouse report. Chris, you said that there was something you wanted to uh, discuss. Uh, yeah, I do. Non-new firehouse report basically was we had a, 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 a result, a resolution of the uh, crackstone issue. Um, we were uh, offered and counter-offered uh, to be credited in the amount of five thousand dollars for the for the cracking uh, of the stone that's out there, and we accepted that. I mean, we were originally offered less, but then we countered it five and, and went with that, and they accepted it. So that was that took care of that. So folks understand what that? <clears throat> there are a few bricks in the uh, lower uh, perimeter. Oh, the facade. facade. Yeah, it was the cast like stone, not, not the bricks per se. It was Excuse the me, the blocks. Color cast, exterior. Cast stone. Yeah. Exterior. Mm -hmm. right. Masonry unit. I'm not sure I would have noticed it yet. And there's more than a few. Well, so there's 18, as I recall. So, at yeah. least, you know. I went back around and looked, trying to figure out if it was happening in one place more than, in, you know, just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. It appears to me that that block somehow has a different thermal coefficient than, than what's oh, yeah. over it and behind it or whatever. So it just shrinks and yeah. pulls apart. Oh, oh, the, the block supplier wrote a three-page treatise on, you know, on thermal expansion of a block, a brick, of yeah. whatever else is behind there. I, you know, the, the cement block uh, and, you know, so and the mortar and, mm -hmm. you know, so it sounds like this. We may see more of it. Uh, they don't believe so. It's gone through the cycle. It's it's all shrunk as much as it's going to shrink yeah. by now. They would have replaced it had we had we wanted them to, but we decided we prefer not to because we thought that would visibly be more unattractive than than just letting this letting this go. There is no structural integrity. Yeah, required of this block. It is no, as long as moisture all getting in those cracks doesn't cause a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've got a boatload of it in storage somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's either here or it's at the. You got it. Yeah. So we have, we it, we have it if we need it because that's another thing. Although we, you know, over time, the sun is going to bleach out the block, or it's going to do something with it, or the. Or, or the dirt is going to get it dirty, and it's yeah, going to get, get dirty. It's either get darker or lighter, and so it won't match the ones that are in storage. So, yeah. And mostly, it gets a little coating of lichen. Did you get a? Did you get the email from me about the request for looking at the ARA? Yes, I took a stuff. look at that yesterday. I gave it to Daniel to take a look at. It. I think we could finesse something. All right. Well, think about uh, it. Yeah, we got a so while. Could you be clear what you're? Tell others what you're referring to. Uh, we are um, going to receive um, two installments of approximately $65,000 each for the 
third uh, American Rescue Plan COVID cash distribution. And uh, as you recall, we were not entitled to it the first time it was distributed, and then things happened, and I don't know who, who pulled the trigger, but state budget. The, the state budget um, took some of their COVID relief money and just and are distributing it to townships. Uh, but the uh, rules and regulations and guidelines are substantially different from the last two or, or three distributions. Uh, there's a lot more accountability. There's a lot more paperwork. There's a lot more. There's a lot less uh, that you can spend it on. Uh, and, and as I say, it has to be a lot more justification that's necessary. One of the things that we spent it on previously was the use uh, of. Re, um, reimbursing ourselves for fire department personnel salaries for responding to uh, EMS incidents, COVID incidents, incidents. The first times we could just say, you know, from this period to this period, you know, our personnel were being used for COVID response, and so we could reimburse ourselves for this period to this period. Now what they want is they want specific personnel, they want specific dates, they want times of day, they want a, a run report that says that they went out and responded to some COVID incident mm -hmm. and the amount of time that they spent on that and all of that has to be documented and then submitted for reimbursement. Uh, certainly my opinion is uh, by next year when the second one is, there's not going to be a whole lot of responses. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of responses for this year. Yeah. So yeah, we have to look back and. <clears throat> I'm not sure how retroactive it is. Mm -hmm. that, that was one thing that I either have to look again okay. uh, to see. Then again, you probably don't have, the, you may not have the documentation that they require for that. It, it might be tight. I mean, for months ago. Or, I mean, we can go back and look at any call that was a respiratory precaution call. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And uh, I mean, those were quite a few, probably 40 or 40 percent of calls. The matching staff would have to figure out how to do that because mm -hmm. uh, they are pretty specific in those two pages you sent me to look at. Um, and, and then it couldn't be at the, in the times that we reimbursed. So I'm not sure we put a time down for that. When we reimbursed ourselves the last two, two or three times, I don't think we put a plan. Well, I would like to consider it as a broader issue. That is, not make the assumption that this is going to go towards the fire and rescue. Okay, but then either you either you pursue that to see whether it's possible to do that, or you just say, "Sorry, you're out." You know, we're going to do something else with this money. Because we it, it may make sense to focus on putting it in the fire. Well, we but won't know if you say we don't want to pursue that. <clears throat> I have not read the, the criteria for how it can be spent. I agree that overwhelmingly our work is fire and rescue. Uh, but I'm looking at the bigger picture of other. COVID-related needs. Okay, but I, I might have misunderstood you. I'm, and if I, if I did, I apologize. It sounded like you wanted to take off, take that option off the table because no. you wanted to look at other options. I'm not making the assumption that it's going to, that it should all go to, you know, let's maximize the way we can put this on fire and rescue. Uh, let's look at. What are other townships doing? What's the village doing? And look at what we can do with fire rescue. Okay, so you're all right with him, with him continuing yes. to explore the possibility? Right. Okay, very good. But I don't want to make the assumption that this is it. No, I'm sorry if you got that impression. There are other things that, that I personally would like to explore <coughs> also, but they're a little more cut and dried uh, our ability to do it as opposed to the paper. Right. See, you know, 
I don't want to put a lot of work on this department to and go then, and then take it away. Yeah, well, I, I, and, and not, not get not, money for it. Right. right. I mean, I don't want to go into a ton of work and then we get twelve dollars. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And Ted can buy some ice cream. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I know this is also a response not from you, but from the feds and the state through the state. I mean, there was some. I mean, those first pots of money were like, do what you will, and there were fire right. departments that were buying ambulances. And say, oh, we're only going to use it for COVID response. Yeah, you are. No, it's not <laughs> but oh, here you go. Know. You know, and townships and villages like buying everything they needed. Yeah, it's a lot of money coming out. I don't know. Okay. Well, to be continued. <laughs> is it time for him to go? It is time for him to go. Yeah, okay, it's good. time for you to go. Well, well I'm being excluded. Do you have time for a tour? Of course, sure. Lamar. Yeah. Well, I thought that's why I was why going. That's why I'm I know. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> real quick, is your medic back in service yet? Uh, it was, oh, but Lord. now it's suffering another, I mean, another um, electrical issue. But I'm consulting with a, an outside expert. Okay. I'll take, I'll take two or at the end of the meeting. If I have time, no, if not, I'll come back some other time. Oh no, they're saying I don't have to stay. You were those days. You used to let me go early. Really. Well, you're welcome to do whatever you like. I was just wanted to have him yeah. him have enough time while. Well, I I I will just go after the meeting if if I have time. Well, I'm going to make it down here some other time. Well, I'm happy to take you out now. I I I'll, I'll just wait till the meeting. Okay. But I mean, I got I got an important meeting at seven o'clock in Springfield, and it involves a I'll give you a hint it involves a baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna get out here at six thirty? Well, that doesn't matter. Is the, is the fire department well, and the okay. now the chop, chop. no longer new firehouse report? No longer new. Did Did you have other fire questions? No. Okay. I'll move on to cemetery. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, since our last meeting, we've had three burials. We had a scattering last Tuesday, and we had two burials today at Glen Forest. We had a burial Friday and Clinton, full burial. Wait, three Please burials, see. a scattering last Tuesday, and what did you say? A uh, full burial and then ashes today in Glen Forest. Man. And Friday will be a burial in Clinton. Full burial? Yes, ma'am. Did we ever get our, our ashes etching committed to? And I have to add more that. Yeah, but yeah, we had that. I had two. Two? Okay, yeah, we had no, those I two. Have okay. Yeah, it's called a game. But they're going to do it someday. Yes. Sometime. <laughs> someday. Okay. I just want to make sure. They're, they're running behind us, but we always hear. Okay. Just checking. But, yeah, we're on them. Okay. Uh, we had a big branch come down today in the cemetery. Took out power. Take out the mailbox. In Glen Forest? Mm -hmm. On Cemetery Street. Really? Yeah, big branch fell on top of the hickory. Yeah. We had just left there to take the uh, water wagon and stuff back to the wow. shop. And when we got back, the village was there and they already moved it. We had to clean it up now. Mm -hmm. And we're going to buy a cheap mailbox to replace it when it's damaged. I told her to be a cheap mailbox. She said, oh, she uses junk mail, so that's okay. That's the mail. It did hurt the post. It, it, and I can fix the post with the box in the middle. So, so we get one soon, put it on for a cheap one. Cheap one. <laughs> so I told her, she said, it's all it is, that's all she needs. I have an extra one. $25 box, whatever they are. I have an extra one. Do you? You want to part with it? Sure. Okay. I'll put that one up. Sure, um, take the numbers off, though. Yeah. There, there's no number. Okay. Okay. We're going to make right ones. Pick that. Okay. And then tomorrow at 2 o'clock, I meet with the people in the natural burial that are buying eight graves. Wow. Have that and get all the information out of the beads made up. <coughs> they didn't want to mail that large of a check. So I'll make a book for them. Cemeteries were we needed, but I thought they both looked pretty good for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe too. I'm surprised this one. It got weedy. The weedy was done. I'm surprised you got loaded again. We didn't tell it was going to, but we did. That good. Well, you put the fear in them. Mm -hmm. 
Any questions? Up? Cemetery questions? Is your uh, mower in the Yes, we have that. We have that whole Friday before. The week before. Come back. What week? What was it? They didn't tell me. I asked really? them. They never said it. Wasn't very expensive. It was under warranty. The only charge we have is it come and pick it up. And I would have took it, but I didn't have it. I'd throw it to the band. I don't know what they charged. It wasn't much, was it? <laughs> but they done us right. Just fine. That's good. Well, road report. Okay. The schedule is next Tuesday to do the culvert on Tobias. I'm cold. <laughs> Replace that 12 inch. I'll go with the 18. A little more water, we'll back up in there if it's needed. Mm -hmm. Now we've got full wind. Yeah, enough time to settle? I think so. And we'll vibrate it down and wait a week or so and put the black top on it. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how soon they're going to pay that road, but I'm looking probably get all this. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, they're right behind. So the weather's holding everybody in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was planning on doing Bryan Park Road next week, but that's going to be getting on that township situation. I've got two workers. They've got things to do too. Yeah. But we're still hoping, and if not, then we won't be wedging. Don't, don't push them. And uh, let's see, trimming, maybe start trimming the week after. So maybe right next week, get out and trim. Because mm -hmm. the county and everybody's out. So. Yep. And the 19th, I need, I'll be off. I have a doctor appointment the day. The missus would like to go. So. Okay. But I'll be working. Is more. 19th Monday, right? 19th yeah. is a Monday. Mm -hmm. She said she really wanted to go. I'll argue with her. So. No questions? Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Fiscal officer's report. Well, it's time for by weekly, by monthly amendment of permanent appropriations resolution. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now therefore the trustees authorize reallocation, oh, oops, amending, that fix that. The following appropriation and in EMS billing, I increased training services by $300. Trustees, the Miami Township trustees authorize a fiscal officer to do so immediately. I move adoption of 2021-23. Yes, thank you. I'll second. Any discussion? No. We'll call the roll. Ms. Demuter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. May we back up one second? Yes. Uh, how, was, how are we doing on the shed removal? Uh, I'm afraid. I assume. I haven't talked to Ethan. I didn't know if you were ready to move on that. Uh, anytime. Okay. Yeah. I'll call him tomorrow. Because okay. I'd like to get that. Yeah, I told him 30 days last time I talked to him. Once we, once we decided when, mm -hmm. we do 30 days to do it. So he, he was okay with that. He just, you know, when. So I'll we'll call him tomorrow and find out what his idea is. I'd like to get the new pad down before it gets cold. Yeah. Okay. Is that going to be uh, double as a homeless shelter? Well, now there's some out of the box thinking. We're in the box thinking. It'll be a, uh, a roof with walls. I'm not making that as a serious proposal. Okay. I don't have anything else. So we <laughs> we're back to fiscal <laughs> officer, and you say you have, we have nothing else. Okay. I've completed my report. Any uh, questions for the fiscal officer? Well, there was um, somebody wants to talk about the sale of the firehouse under the fiscal officer's report. I just wanted to let everyone know that 
There has been a deposit of $380,000 into the general fund as a result of the sale. Uh, and there's also been a deposit, to my understanding, um, although I didn't see it, so maybe it hasn't happened yet, of um, 159000 from the, the final USDA con uh, con not contribution, distribution of funds. But it's in there. It's in there. Mm -hmm. It was deposited in June, and it's now, uh, it's, uh, it's on a revenue. It's capital project for zero? That's expenditures. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. No, you mean here, it's okay. Yeah, no. Okay, there, there, there. There it is. is. Okay. Very good, thank you. Sure. Well, I'd just like to add that the, <coughs> uh, the Community Foundation is providing staffing for the Yellow Springs Development Corporation for free. So I got a call from the Community Foundation regarding the check from the uh, Development Corporation uh, and that they had had a couple problems with mailing and mail taking unexpected length of time so they suggested a physical handoff of the check. So I had the pleasure of going and walking $380,000 Dayton Street to Margaret's desk. Can you take a picture? Check? <laughs> nope. Was it one of those big checks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This big. Anyway, it felt good. It, it was a, a sense of closure. Yeah. Literally. I'm sure the zoning inspector has nothing to talk about. No. But we entertain your report. <laughs> um, since I last sat down with you, I've issued one zoning permit. It's um, for a, a personal solar array on a property out on Clifton Road. The, as you know, the zoning commission has has got their final draft of the, of the new PUD chapter completed and is looking for any feedback so that they might make any changes uh, necessary before they schedule their public hearing on that amendment. And when is the next commission meeting? Third Tuesday of the month. I have um, two suggestions. I can take notes. Um, the first one, right off the bat, um, uh, the development standards uh, under A, plan unit development only to consider the locations where public sewer and water will be provided and used. Well, that, in effect, removes any possible area in Miami Township, so why are we have a PUD uh, section when it cannot be utilized? The, the, I believe, and I can't necessarily speak for the Zoning Commission, was that the comprehensive plan says the development should occur adjacent to the village. And, and, and it should. The, and the village, yes, the, currently the village basic uh, policy is not to extend public and sewer and water outside the village. They right. just annex whatever mm -hmm. ever comes along. Um, so. But if the village policy changes, then someone can develop using our PUD adjacent to the village. Our last PUD, our only PUD, was developed without sewer or water. No, nope. it now has water. <laughs> it now has water, but it was developed. No, without no, no. I'm sewer not saying. I, as I say, I can't. I believe okay. that they're trying to match the comprehensive plan. Okay. Was the reason for that that statement? It. Um, but I, you know, I don't 
profess ever to know all the logic that goes on mm -hmm. with the zoning commission. Well, I, I would have a difficult time voting to accept this with with a with a with a requirement that means they can't do anything in the township. Uh, well, no sense at, at the present time, for example, there is public water in in the western part of the township it, right now. It does not say public water. It says water and sewer. No, no, there's not sewer yet, right. but there could be. And it isn't, it isn't, at the present, no. you're right. That's okay. the only option. Clifton is not extending water and sewer, mm -hmm. and so it would have to be with the, with the village system. Um, and I don't think, I mean, there's other possibilities for water, but there, isn't, there aren't possibilities for sewer at the present time. So they, they but take, I will, I will relay your, your message. Okay. They could take the sewer out, the sewer requirement out, and it would be much more, much more palatable. The second one was under, it's a second page-ish, 13.3, Criteria for Plan Development Approval. Uh, number three, the site shall be accessible from public roads that are adequate to carry traffic imposed upon them uh, by what the proposed to Delton and streets and driveways on the site of the proposed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to go. Private streets will be permitted if constructed the same standard as public streets. Miami Township shall have no responsibility or liability for maintenance of such, such streets. We've, uh, uh, we're going to take the veil out of this. Uh, we've not allowed private streets to be constructed. Uh, in Miami Township, I'm not sure why we would want to change that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I believe that was in the chapter before we, before it was rewritten. Okay. I, I could I could check on that. It's it's a it's common language, mm -hmm. but um, the in fact, if you have to build your private streets to the same standard as public streets then all you're saying is, we would prefer to maintain our own streets. Say that again, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. If you have to build your private streets to the same standards uh -huh. as you would public streets, yeah. then the only reason you would want to have private streets would be to A, limit traffic on them, have a gated community, but you would be then paying to maintain those streets and they snow plow them and uh -huh. do all that yourself. So that would it doesn't seem economically particularly desirable to do private streets, but that's, um, I'm pretty sure that that's something that's inherited from the old code. Okay. If, if you think private streets are a bad idea, I would guess that there's no problem with taking that out. What do you think? I'd be surprised if somebody wanted a private street here. Well, I don't uh, see uh, a reason to prohibit it. The reason to prohibit is what we will, I mean, we talked about this for, for many years, is, is public safety. If you, if you allow a private street and then 20 years from now it's full of ruts, full of potholes, you know, you can't get, it's, it's overgrown, you can't get an ambulance or a fire, you know, a, a fire engine down it, uh, you can't, pl you know, nobody's plowing it because they gave up on that years ago, so people are un happy that they can't get in and out and potentially if there's a big snow and somebody's sick you can't get in to get them etc 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 that those were all the reasons why uh, in, in the past when somebody's come to us and said and, and there, obviously there's been very few times uh, you know, well, we must want to put a street in here and make it you know development here or here or there and we turn them down so that's the logic that I use here okay. So, uh, again, if that came before us for okay. adoption with that language, I, I'd have a hard time voting for it. Those okay. are the only things that I had. Uh, <coughs> we have another time. meeting before the next Planning Commission meeting. Um, yeah. So, I may have other comments, but the moment I don't. Well, well, the, no, you don't have another or your first and third Monday, so they're the next day. Yeah, they're the day after, the day after. your your next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, they're meeting on the twentieth. We meet on the nineteenth. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Sure. I'll be happy to to relay anything up until the meeting. Yeah. Question. Meeting the zoning commission, not the planning commission. You're right. Excuse me. I was on village council longer than. Thank you.
It, it's really? interesting. I had somebody just ask me today: Is 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 your title really zoning inspector? Who's the zoning administrator? <laughs> you know, I had to explain that that's just how the townships seem to do it. That the job is exactly the same in in different places. Okay, so the obviously the the last item is uh, we did have a BCA hearing on the thirtieth. Um, concerning an agritourism request or requests from the Arthur Morgan Institute of Community Service or Community Solutions. Um, and the BCA's decision was, well, there were basically two things. Could they rent out their, their conference room in their, in their building complex for other uses than, than their own? And B, could they have events in the barn? And I'm simplifying that a little bit. And the BCA said no to the events in the barn and yes to the use of running out the portion of the, the office building. Um, that, that they, the BCA deliberated in executive session. I was not present for that. And then they came out and did sort of these lightning motions and passes which was very late at night, relatively speaking, <laughs> for some of us who go to bed before 10.30. Um, so I am waiting to get the actual transcript of the meeting to know exactly what was said and how it was couched before um, I go any further with it. Um, but they were also talking that, that the chair, Richard Silliman, and Steve Howler were going to prepare sort of a resolution statement of this was what the, the BZA decided. So that may be available before we, we get the transcript back. Um, I can't tell you if what this, this means in the future, both with Agraria and, and with the township. But the township had, had, had sort of said that and use the loose generic term, the party barn concept is, is at least not in favor of the way this one was, was presented to the, to the BCA, but that they're not completely adverse to, to some more liberal interpretations of the agritourism statute. Uh, but I want to hesitate on that. I've got to understand very clearly what, what they're saying so that I can use that information in the future for other people that come to me and, and apply. Sure. It was, um, we filled this room to the capacity limit that the fire department set and had That's at least six, a half a dozen 61. people in the hall 67. watching through 67. the window and, and being, I said, you know, if you want to attend this meeting, you know, we're not, we, we're, we cannot turn you away. We will not turn you away. They said, oh, no, this is fine. So we didn't have to continue the meeting and, and find another location and, and do it on down the road. But um, I don't know, times are changing. I mean, most of the people here were here to watch the show. They weren't here to testify, even though there were a significant number of people that did speak. Um, the meeting lasted a long time because people were long-winded. Um, I think is the simplest way of, of putting it. And um, what else could I say? We the Board of Zoning Appeals has agreed that they need to have uh, a, a meeting that's not a hearing, not not a, a, a meeting where they're dealing with a question in order to talk about how do you handle these new kinds of meetings that are coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when do you second guess that you should limit the time that people speak? There was a huge amount of material that was tried to be funneled through me to give to the BZA from Agraria. That's not the way that we've ever operated in the past, and so we have to set up a policy on how to handle those kinds of things. And so anyway, you, working on Matt, we're making all of this run more smoothly <coughs> in the future um, is, is sort of on the agenda, and to have probably have Steve Howler at that meeting 
giving us the legal background. The other thing is, I think, now that we've had a significant turnover on the BZA, need to check again on what resources are available for those people to get training from the Township Association or, or local sources like, like Rhonda Painter used to do to help help them get up to speed in that way. Well, it's too bad we had such a turnover in the prosecutor's office because as you yeah. know, they, they were doing excellent training. For exactly. But that, you know, so many things have changed that, yeah. that we've got to, to work out some of this so that, you know, the next time around, uh, I don't think that things didn't run well enough, but they could have run more smoothly, I believe. And we also want to make sure that, that everything is done legally. Of course, because it certainly could come back at you. Oh, damn. And, um, I was, I was, um, what do I want to say? I was comfortable with, with Steve Haller and, in, 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 you know, as my, the new person I'm, I'm working with as opposed to uh, working with Eli and Charman in, in the past. Um, and he made the effort to speak up a couple of times when there were legal issues that were being presented. Mm -hmm. And then not only was he here and his intern, and also his boss, the county prosecutor, and they all sat in with the Board of Zoning Appeals when they did the deliberation. Mm -hmm. So at least that part of it had a mm -hmm. had careful, careful scrutiny. So, uh, Who took the minutes? We, we, had a, we had a stenographer mm -hmm. from, oh, I don't have the name of the company in, in front of me. Uh, that, you know, there was a little bit of a snafu in that is that Laura Curlis, the, who represented Agraria, offered to engage a, a, a sonographer. And the sonographer didn't show up at the first meeting. And she later said that it, you know, it was their fault, but they weren't going to give us the services for free this time because it was their fault. Anyway, and they've done it, and then um, I'm going through the, they don't, they don't have any idea who I am. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, I'm the zoning inspector and I'm, and I'm asking for a copy of these, these, you know, this for this purpose and, and all, and then find out, oh, it's 10 business days before we can get you anything. So I'm still waiting on my, my minutes mm -hmm. for the meeting, but, um, when all this was going on, Don did a little research and, and presented a, another company that provides centrographic services. And I think that if I hire one in the future, I'm going to use this other company because I called them up and said, what's the process? I'm, I'm not remembering doing this. I think this. that was well, me. Was, that, was it you, not Don? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm honored. Well, it's probably one of them. When it comes to Miami Township <laughs> trustees, I don't know which one of you it is. And maybe I made the wrong assumption. But anyway, I, I called them and asked about how it worked, and they seemed very clear and cheerful and ready to do business, whereas it's, it's been like pulling teeth with this other company. Mm -hmm. I would like a copy of the minutes when you get it. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've asked for you know, both paper and digital copies so that it will be easy to distribute because I've had other people make requests yeah. okay. as well. Sure. And digital I, is fine with me. I don't need paper. Yeah, I don't know how 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 big of a file a, a two and a half hour meeting yeah. is. Probably won't be as big as Kingwood's application. <laughs> no, no, we we can't challenge them just yet. <clears throat> and just so everyone's aware, the room capacity was from the office. Oh, that's where that number came from. Based on the OBBC. Mm -hmm. And then we got a panic text from a village official during the meeting oh. about that, and if we could, exp exp you know. And Make it bigger. And it's not doable. So. No. Well, well, you're not moving this wall out. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it really meet the intent of the code just yeah. because no. people have nothing else to do on Wednesday. Yeah. Not that you couldn't put in more chairs in this room oh, yeah. than 67, and and we had you know all the tables packed up except the ones that were needed for people with tables, but and and. I was very conscious of the fact that there needed to be clear aisles and that people could get to either of these doors. But um, 
Then he explained to me that if you're really following all the rules, you can't have rolling around chairs for people to sit in because they can get moved and push shoved in somebody's way when people are panicking to get out of the room. They're all right if you have tables, but not if they're just in with rows. And actually, if you have chairs in rows, even regular folding chairs are supposed to be lashed together so that they can't be knocked over. So nobody decided to enforce that on the 30th. But we need, I think we, uh, all of us in the township who want to use this room, need to do some thinking about how we safely accommodate whatever number of people we want to accommodate for various events. Well, I said uh, two meetings ago that I would work on standards for public use of the room, and uh, I directed the traffic to for parking, uh, and uh, after that experience, uh, I'm going to do a different kind of research. Yeah. yeah, we have 12 parking spaces, so you realize how many, we wouldn't overfill the room if that were all the people that were, we were accommodating. Anyway, the, the, <clears throat> the chairs, how many chairs do we have, how many people do we want to? Um, yeah, we have about somehow 25 chairs in the room now. And that, that also relates to parking and signage and... Uh, To be continued. I'll bring that up later. Any other? No, I think that's. Any other questions just about the, right now? I guess the main thing is waiting for the transcript. Yeah. Or you haven't heard anything about. There's no action that's pending after that. It just no, not, not that I've been informed yeah. of. I, I don't know if there's a fixed amount of time. There may be that if if uh, uh, the folks that brought this issue up want to appeal it to the courts, they have to probably do it within a certain amount of time. But I'm not familiar with that. That's not written in my code. Well, we actually touched on some of the new business already. What do we have old business pending? What are we right now from our? I have a few pieces of old business. Um, I guess the major one is um, that we received the um, copy of the Solar Farm Kingwood application to the. OPSB whatever board and uh, and, a, and a relatively lengthy uh, <laughs> set of documents uh, of which I've gone through a few but I, not all of them but the one I did was the uh, I don't know I guess it's I guess it's the actual application that's the way it, it read um, which is very interesting and a couple of the, the things that I, I took from it uh, was they have written in there that, there were, that they expect a 25 foot setback in, from the perimeter. And regional planning has gone through a, a um, exercise, I guess it were, in a potential zoning code that had we had the power to do it, you know, what would be the best way mm -hmm. to, to do it? For some reason, they kept coming up with a 300-foot setback, which I pushed them on and never really got, number one, a good explanation why such a large setback, and number two, why they, we, I mean, I'm part of it, uh, wouldn't, have, wouldn't be changing it. I mean, we're changing, you know, it's, it's not applicable, it's not enforceable, but, but they, Held on this 300 feet, and I'm not really sure why. I was just that was 300 feet from a stream. No, it was 300 feet from, from property line, from from perimeter yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, it originally started out a perimeter line, or from a non-participant's 
property. But that would effectively be the same. I mean, you, non participant would be on the other side of the perimeter, obviously, because it, they weren't participating. And so that would be in the 300 foot range. So I, I'm not really sure. Okay, Chris, uh, one thing that crosses my mind, and because when we were working on this PUD, we were talking about perimeter and relations. And I think our industrial zoning has something like a 200 foot mm -hmm. setback mm -hmm. from adjacent residential property. So that number isn't so ridiculous if you think of a solar array as, as industrial. Mm -hmm. um, not that it has some of the, all of the drawbacks of it that an industry might. Mm -hmm. They're generally relatively quiet. There's some humming going on, but yeah, um, I know in the there are some rationales I yeah, can see for yeah. that number. And there, and there, and there are in, in those circumstances, Richard, where you have, okay, now here's the industrial and here's the access road back to machine shop number three, and you've got a constant stream of, of semis going back there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm not no. saying it's, I'm just saying where someone could come up with a number like that. Yeah. That's, I'm not yeah. justifying Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that might be the case. I just found, found that interesting. Uh, they also were saying that they, and we've talked about this here, that they were going to probably clear 25 acres of, of wooded uh, areas in within the project for, for whatever reasons. Well, they were a little more specific, and it was not one 25-acre mm -hmm. place. It's 25 acres uh, near, near the perimeters uh, so that, you know, if there was, if, tr if trees were going to cast shade on the solar panels, those would be removed, you know, they had potential for casting shade on the solar panels. Those, and yes, apparently there's some places that were uh, where they would be putting, um, they weren't going to, it wouldn't be good for solar, but it would be good for the, for the switching stations and the converters and all the rest of that sort. So that, that was it. Uh, I had in my mind that there was going to be, you know, like one big, you know, cut down. Apparently not. Um, and I also noticed that, or noticed that there was not mentioned of how they were going to mow or how they were going to maintain the, the grass or the property in between the panels. It, 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 nothing said anything about, you know, well, every 10 days or every two weeks or every month they would mow it. And they were going to have sheep like, like Antioch, not that I know of. Unless Lamar's got a lot of sheep out there, then he's going to rent them <laughs> every That's 10 day basis. That would be a lot of sheep. You know, something that occurs to me when, when you talk about cutting down trees that are in the way, so to speak, <coughs> not clearing the forest, but one of the things that we all sort of know is there's this constant balance between the bigger the field, let's say if you're row cropping, the easier it is to use the big machinery. But on the other hand, the fewer fence rows you have, the more potential you have for problems with erosion, with wind, and everything else. And, you know, I think I know as many farmers who have left their, their fence rows and trees intact and, and don't get as much crop area. When you get over there to the shady side, things don't grow very well and you can sort of see, you know, that edge to the field. But it's a trade-off to not use every square inch of land to protect the land. And that might be an issue, you know, worth bringing up in in the negotiations about the whole thing. Well, don't tell that to Joe Staggs, because that man takes every square inch of dirt that he can get right <laughs> up to the... As I say, right different farmers end. have different attitudes about this, but um, I've always noticed that, you know, not every farmer goes out and cuts down every tree up to the property line. What's your there must on be that? some reasons Lamar. for that. I would say it's not only shady, but they don't want a tree to fall on their solar panel. That could be too. Well, if they got a 300 foot setback, they don't have to worry about well, that. I, I, I can't believe they're going to set back 300 feet. No, 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 they won't. They have 25 foot. That's, that's what, that's what Best or they, Kingwood said. Yeah, 25 yeah. foot setback. Yeah, where, where did 300 come from? It was just, a, it, it was just a, a, uh, an exercise zoning ordinance from regional planning that they were putting together, just sort of a future you know, in, in the future, but they, they had this 300 foot. That but it wasn't something the solar panels people had to do? No, no, uh, no not at all. Oh, okay. No, no, 25 no. feet. It's this what exercise they is sort of useless. Well, yeah, no, it is <laughs> useless. But the, the 25 feet may <laughs> include a row of trees and a road. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, 
I don't. Mm -hmm. I I I don't. My battery ran out, and I don't know what time it is. <laughs> but I got to go. Look, I would. It is six twenty-nine. Oh, you better go. I got one minute. I would suggest that you get a contract between the landowners and the solar farm and read it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not going to know what you're talking about. But would you send us a copy of yours? And you'll know what they're committed to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I guess I, I have one. These people went around at least two years ago, maybe three, mm -hmm. and got these contracts. So the people, the people that signed them, they they don't have. You can't change your mind. They don't have anything to do with what's happening now. And a, a lot of people that signed them had no idea there was going to be so much opposition. And there's several of those people wish they hadn't signed them. Yeah. And so they're, you know, it's, it's mass confusion as far as I'm concerned. But like I say, they did it mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, these, they guys can't are get out these guys they, are going forward, that's they for They can't sure. get out of it now. Yeah. They had no idea when they signed it that there would be so much opposition. So, I don't know how it's going to come out. Personally, I'm just right on the fence. I, I, I'm just letting nature take its course. I, what happens, happens. I'm not pushing for it. Mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be nice to know what, what their base commitment is, you know, in terms, if, if there are things like setbacks in your contract. Well, like, like you say, I think it's 25 feet, but it's been three years. Yeah, yeah. They said it started in 2017. I mean, obviously they, yeah. you know, it, it, it went for a while, and or it still is going out. Some people are signed up, and they're not going to use what they signed up for, mm -hmm. but they're still paying for, even though they're not going to use it, they're still paying for it. Mm -hmm. So these people got tons of money. Yeah. Okay. So it's been fun, folks. <laughs> well, have a good baseball. Check contract. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Come back when you can stay longer. Well, I'll, I'll do that. That, that, that. that tour offers open? Okay. It's open. I'll, I'll do it later. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm not sure are, how to handle These them. contracts are 20 years? I think they're 30, 40. 30, 30 or 35. I thought there were 43. But 43. 43? No, we're, we're going to see one. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, this is going to be an ongoing uh, process, and uh, we could just make it a, an item of a check-in every two weeks uh, on Kingwood. Uh, I think that's the best way to handle it. I went to, and, and uh, Lamar was there, and Marilyn Moyer was there. Uh, went to a public information, uh, expo. it was really kind of an, you say expo, I would say open house. Expo might be too grand, but it's <laughs> tables. Yeah, there were table information tables uh, presenting where Vesper was presenting the Kingwood proposal. Do you want to describe it in any way? Um, I didn't see too much new information. I learned about the humming 
of the they talk they the table about yeah. noise. A table about if you saw about prairie or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it, I think you know people have created prairies places. Even the people who want to do it here, it's a big ordeal. And if you think about maintaining a prairie on a thousand acres, it sounds like almost as big a job as the the, the solar site itself. It doesn't doesn't seem real practical. That's what one of the things that I thought of. <coughs> but that they is had a lot of. They were giving away a lot of things. Uh, they they made it look as if they're doing serious. Uh, I guess they would make a distinction between meadow and prairie. Oh, well, did they say meadow? Um, yeah. That seems like a a very skilled and, um, and intensive. They made it sound like they're you know this is going to be really special, but what really goes down on paper? What they really commit to and. Um, I think I made reference before to this ad hoc task force of the Greater Dayton mm -hmm. Environmental Partners. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the folks from that group came, uh, and he visited with one of the people from the, I think it's a Pennsylvania company that does uh, prairies and meadows. and. Uh, they went into literally the weeds about, well, how far off the ground are these panels going to be if you're going to do the maintenance of the meadow. Uh, and with prairie, typically you talk about burning off you know, once a year. Uh, and that's when they said, no, wait a minute, this is meadow. <laughs> different, different range of plants, and that is not, you know, we can do mowing. Uh, And this person was uh, took the, the fellow from Dayton. Uh, actually, was, he's with Five River, yeah, Metro Parks. Um, it, he was impressed. You know, they said, "Well, uh, with your suggestions, we'll, we'll change our proposal." Uh, it was all just kind of casual, back and forth. Um, but we'll see what really happens. And the timeline for the, the formal hearings, there are many phases, I can't recite them, uh, but the rubber hits the road <coughs> really next year. So we have time for uh, sharing ideas, for studying it, and doing research. Uh, the big thing in my mind is whatever plan goes through, uh, how is it enforced? And what's happening in 10 years around fire safety? You know, who's, who's responsible for uh, inspecting all these wires and gizmos? Jennifer said something to me last week. I'm sorry, she's not here now. Um, you said you have to be careful about when you're an intervener. If you're dead set against it, you could, from the start, you could close yourself out of like mitigating options and things like that. So it's just something interesting she said to me. Like, um, yeah. That's she, been my she's, and she's studied a lot of different mm -hmm. the processes of different communities, so. Um, she's seen different ways it's gone down. There's not like that. I mean, we will have a document that we've submitted, more than one probably, that we would discuss and vote on. Uh, so as interveners, you guys t see the application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got it. And are you uh, interveners on our behalf? So. So that we also see the document. I'm not sure if we want to see the document, but like I guess okay, there's, sp there's supposed to be a copy at the public library. Oh, at the public library. Now, which public library is it? Xenia. Mm -hmm. I'll find out. Xenia is the parent library in New York County. Well, the copy of the uh, application that I have says their timeline 
uh, is for um, the potentially the, the, the power siding board to issue the permit in December of this year. Uh, which means that all the then you you've looked at something I didn't the, see the, and that's very important, important to hear. And the key word is certificate. Mm -hmm. When they vote on the certificate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that's the by the terminology they use. The certificate yeah. would be issued in December. I'll be surprised, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be too. Yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> well, more on this next time. Um, let's see, we already talked about ARP Act funding. Um, what about, did we get anything from the, the world of virtual meetings uh, that we could use? There's, you know, I don't understand all the technology we have here, but it's is there a way of having uh, live virtual streaming? Virtual meeting technology or? is over there. It's not right. Really well, that there. that's uh, played two weeks later. That's uh, not ours, number one. No, but I'm just telling you, I got a lesson in what's yep. here, yep. and that's not what would enable right. you to to have a virtual meeting. We'd have to have we'd have to have a computer. A monitor, a, a, a sound system, a, a camera, and an internet connection right there. Mm -hmm. Or up there, so it would point at us. Well, do we want to do that? Or is, is that much ado about a $250 a year license to, to do it and somebody to mm -hmm. run it? And if we do something like that, is that simply passive, or would people be able to I mean, that is Well, I, I, I know it's possible. What do we want? Would we want people to be able to uh, participate, remotely. call in, so to speak, uh, virtually? Well, based on our experience for a, a year plus of doing virtual meetings, mm -hmm. uh, we had, other than some, some solar farm, inter interested solar farm people, I, I don't recall having any members of the general public on our virtual meetings. And they were advertised, you know, they were advertised, I mean, obviously they were public meetings, they were advertised all along. And uh, again, based on the amount of public that we have come to our meetings over the years, mm -hmm. it's non-existent. Uh, so, do we really want to go to the couple of thousand dollars worth of expense and to, to, to have a virtual meeting go on, you know, at, at the same time as our meeting or have it available as, as minutes and or if, if channel six gets, channel five, <laughs> whatever gets back, gets, gets, gets back in action, that we can put the video on, mm -hmm. on our website, I don't know, it was a couple of days later that, that it came mm -hmm. back to us and, and then it was put on. If anybody watched it and had any questions about it, they certainly could get with any of us or could come to the next meeting or uh, email us or, or something. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not really sure that it's worth the, the, the time and trouble to, to do that. What's the difference between just how you guys did it at home? Like you each had a computer in front of you at home. Mm -hmm. I guess it could handle that. What's the difference between just doing that here? Not not making it available for people to call in or... Uh, what's the, t the machine yeah. about? We'd have to have a computer, a, a, a separate computer for Don, a laptop. We wouldn't bring in uh, a laptop well, for Don. Don. You mean that whoever's chairing? No, who's ever here, whoever's right. participating. Okay. Uh, You'd yeah. have to have one for everyone in the room. Right. Each one. Okay. Each person would have to have a computer and then We'd have to have the service, you know, the Zoom or, or whatever. Um, if, if you're going to do it so that you everybody can see everybody. Right. You can have a camera on the room that, that could be sending out the information in real time. And, and you could have somebody, 
you know, like it's, they could still phone in or whatever, but you don't have, you can't look at each other if you're doing that. No, I was just thinking the basics of what you had during COVID, would that suffice? No, that meant that everybody had his or her yeah, own my, computer. And that, you know, that's actually what you find out is then people want to participate remotely, but they don't have a computer, so, and they, but it's my right, you know, to participate. It, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but that's another level of complexity yeah. in, the, in the process. Well, I pose the question more out of uh, just kind of, uh, it's an obvious question. We're going through a change and let's look at it. Uh, I, I don't feel uh, a great urge in any particular direction, <clears throat> but I'm aware that some organizations are try hybrid meetings and so I, I bring it up. So this will be going where? This, That's this public public access. This recording will go to that, that camera belongs to it used to go it, it used to go back to the village public access department. Yeah. And then they would uh, they would transcribe it onto a uh, a um, Uh, the thumb drive and give that back, give the thumb drive back to us, and then they would take the video on it and, and, and broadcast it on channel. So, on, so where did the on. YouTube channel come from? We would we would upload the meeting onto the YouTube channel ourselves. So it's a it's a delay. Yeah, there's there's it's a, delay. a couple of days uh, a delay. There oh, was. a couple of days from. Yeah. Like ideally, how soon would this get to the public? It was a couple of days. I mean, that doesn't seem generally doesn't they, seem bad. I mean, well, but it doesn't provide for the in-person interaction, which I'm not sure that's you know that you'd have well, in a virtual meeting. <laughs> it seems yeah, like I if somebody wants to say something that the, the dynamics of virtual meetings are different mm -hmm. than they are. Now, I think that we can learn to to adapt to that, but, you know, I attended virtual meetings of various sorts for a year, and, and most of the people running those meetings didn't know how to involve everybody that was at the meeting. And you have to make a conscientious effort. When you have a, a million faces out there and somebody wants to speak, how do you know? You know, I mean, that's one of the problems. Yeah, then you have a bunch of hands waving and you keep track of it. Oh, no, you need to use the chat. The chat room. Yeah. What, what's the chat? Oh, I'm calling in on a phone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, no, it's not as simple as, as people make out as, a, to an, as an enhancement for more participation. Well, I don't hear any uh, great push to do something different than what we're doing. Are there other new business items? I don't know new, I have a couple old business items. Okay. I see other old business. Wanted to let the board know that. Chairman, I said it does have Patty 82, we're asking that 592 Yellow Springs Fairfield Road, 592 Yellow Springs Fairfield Road, cross their corner, Sun Trail, and West Union Road. Yeah, the the Paramedics made it since 592 on the way we can. Uh, no, no, unfortunately. We've been told that we cannot eliminate that. Okay. Uh, well, well, business. <laughs> to the speaker wires. Um, where was I? Uh, you had a couple of old business items. Yeah. Oh, okay. When when we were deciding on ordering these columbariums for the for the cemetery, and, the, and they were sixteen thousand two hundred dollars each. If you add the two together, that makes them thirty two thousand four hundred dollars, which is above what I thought was in my mind, the $25,000 threshold for competitive bidding. To make a long story short, I asked Steve Haller if that was the case, and he said no, for whatever reasons, being a cemetery or being a township or being a college area, we didn't have to competitive bidding. So that made my day a little bit easier uh, last week. So, and I've got that on paper for, for an email from uh, The only other thing I had 
Don was, where are we with our natural pollinator garden program, tree planting, you know? Uh, it, it rests with me talking about what could we do in-house, and I haven't done that. Uh, the, well, the detailed suggestion that I've, from the plan we, had, we paid for uh -huh. uh, that I think makes sense going forward with is uh, I don't know how much you've been looking at the, let's call it, the wet spot, the, the detention basin. Uh -huh. um, but there's a permanent puddle. Yeah. Uh, and the, Catherine's suggestion is that we do a, but also she says that the soil there is not all that great. We put in a thin, put in some topsoil that raises the elevation just in that wet area. Mm -hmm. And then in a larger area, put in uh, sort of plugs for the kind of prairie grass that she suggests uh, that doesn't, you know, doesn't grow as tall as some others and that we would have to knock down once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I steer away from the menu of lots of different uh, flowers and whatever up on the uh, sides of the basin. And we just get that very simple, basic I'm not using the right word, it's not grass, it's a, it's a version of what was planted in the... It's a different thing, a different thing. And it's made for wetter area, the, similar to what you guys did in the natural uh, burial area. So is this in progress? Is this no. I have not taken any more steps since we've got okay. it. Don, as a, as a caution, I guess my sort of civil engineering background. If you just try to fill in puddles, chances are you will just have a new arrangement of puddles. You they, have to plan to grade it so that the water, so that it slopes continuously from one end to the other. If you go in and fill in the puddles and plan, and then you find that you have new puddles in other places, you're, you're in trouble. The, the purpose of the filling in is not so much to get rid of the puddle, it's uh, to use, no, instead of trying to put uh, topsoil everywhere, that we need more topsoil, but we'll compromise and just Oh, so is this an arbitrary way of, it's, of it's, distributing some topsoil? Yeah. Okay, well I can't argue with that. Okay, can, may I just... Uh, I've had long conversations with somebody, and I can't remember who it is, but it doesn't matter. Keep in mind that underneath that ground are three or four huge dry wells. And those dry wells basically consist of large rock in, in tubes. And I've been told, do not, under any circumstance, put any topsoil <laughs> on top of that clay, that special clay that's there now, which is meant to, to well, I don't know if it's clay, but it's something, it's meant to scientifically move the water into the dry wells, and then what's not there, to go into the ground. But if you put topsoil in there, and you have a, a nice heavy rain, you're going to wash that topsoil down into the dry well and fill in the voids where so, the rock is. I should be talking to who, whoever, was it? I don't know if it was Fred Cox from Fillmore that, or, or one of MSA's engineers who designed the thing. It wasn't Thunderbird. No, it was not Jason. I don't think you <laughs> Well, am I allowed to talk to Fred? Certainly. Even mm -hmm. though the contract's over? Oh, yeah. Can we keep it needs the grade is less than the drains. 
it needs to be brought up. That's why he don't drink. His love is possible. It actually needs to be. You know, there's, there's no up. magic happening that that water is going into the drywall. It's sitting there. It, it's sitting there, but it's evaporating. And it's evaporating to the point where either it's dry or yeah. where it rains again and some fresh water. That is not stagnant water. That water moves any time it gets rain. Well, it just depends how long it takes it to evaporate. Exactly. Whether you, if a mosquito's life cycle My, or not. Right? Yeah, but I don't, I don't know that we're going to get anywhere in this meeting, but I have pictures of what was, you know, the different stages of that. Uh -huh. uh, I'll describe it a little differently than you, but uh, the, <clears throat> I'm, I'm confident that the topsoil would not wash in. That, that, Okay, we can, I, I can, we can have that talk while we're standing and looking at it, and I can explain what. Well, I, that's, that's fine, but I... We'll talk more. Can I ask a few questions? Yes. Um, is there a binder or something where old minutes live? After you approve them? Well, sure. We've got a uh, hundred years worth of them in the office. Oh yeah, <laughs> in the you're, office you're welcome, here. You're welcome to come in and, and review them anytime. And that's um, there's not usually somebody in the office who needs to make an office. arrangement. Make an arrangement. <coughs> but make we it try to accommodate. So that's how. That's how the public looks at minutes. Is mm -hmm. yeah. by Margaret is making, in charge of the minutes. Making an arrangement to yeah. see them. You just have to um, ask her when and where. And or just tell me where you want and make a copy for you. Well, there, I don't know how far back, but there are, there are many on the website. Well, there's 100 years of them in the office. Right. Okay. So it's a question of which ones you want to see. Yeah, the website. The website has about three months Yeah. Before. Okay. And it's kind of. Mm -hmm. In a running stream mm -hmm. instead of in a. Yeah, it's not a specific file. Chronological. So then, zoning board meetings and, and, and BZA meetings are, are those those are public meetings? Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And they have minutes too that the public, no. or are that you guys are obligated to share or not obligated to share. If if it's basically anything in that office is. So, mm -hmm. both of those meetings have minutes that also are in the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, yeah, the, when we get those minutes, and at least in the past, um, they were set on, on top I've of the binder, and I put them meetings. in the binder. Planning commission zoning. meetings, but not zoning. Yeah. BZA minutes. Yeah, I mean, BZA. So kept, they kept their own records in the past. And I don't, we don't have a, a formal setup for that. Maybe we need to have one in the office. So, for there example, there were years when there was no BZA meeting. Yeah, because it is that as needed meeting, BZA? Yes. Mm -hmm. as needed. And I mean, I we can have a whole year without a meeting. We can yeah. have a year with several meetings. And then most of them probably weren't like the last two. Oh, no. <laughs> so those, those are the only two well, in the 20 years that I've been at this yeah. or anything like that. So the, when you get the minutes from the stenographer, they'll go, well, they, there might be interest in people seeing those. Yeah, will they and, go and they're, I mean, the easiest where? thing, I have asked for both paper and digital copy. And as soon as I have a digital copy, anybody that emails me or calls me up has got a copy is if they got an email address. Well, and we could put a link on the, well, we could put it on the website. Mm -hmm. No, but if, well, yeah, they're up on it, the website, I can advise people If it's a stenographer, how is it digital? I'm, I'm confused. Well, when I say digital, it's a file that I can attach oh, yeah, an email file attach. as opposed to paper. Then. A flyer, right. Okay. But it's exactly oh, the same information. Um, blah, 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 blah. This is my meeting. I think that's it. Oh. 
not to make this meeting too long, but agritourism is mentioned in both residential R1 and R2, but it's not even mentioned in when under zone, land zone agriculture in, in, in the Yes, it is. Not on the website, and that's the problem we had at the meeting the other day. Yeah, I know, and, and I don't, I have no idea like why I've been the copy of the code that I provided for the website didn't end up on the website. But the copy I have and that I work with and that we have printed up is, is up to date. That the state mandated that we put that in our code mm -hmm. uh, several years ago. We had some time to write text to go along with it. There are a, a couple of things that we can regulate in terms of agriculture, but mostly we can. But when we made those changes, and I'm going to say that was about three years ago, was this, at the same time we did a bunch of changes to the, to the agricultural chapter, as well as putting the agritourism in, in every chapter that the state mandated it be. Mm -hmm. By chapters you mean when it says A1 or R1 yeah, or R2? Yeah, R1, you know, it, has, it has to be everywhere. Basically so, districts, not chapters. Yeah, the, cha the chapters are both zoning their districts. So the, zoning districts. And so, like for example, I was reading, there's bed and breakfasts allowed at, on a, in, at farm or on agriculture. Bed and breakfasts are allowed. Those are still allowed. But country clubs are no longer allowed. That's Golf courses. Not they're, they're a conditional use now. They're not a principally permitted use. They, if they meet the, the review of the Board of Zoning Appeals, then they can be allowed. But they have to decide whether it's, it meets whatever conditions they, they choose. That there's a list in the, in the code about how conditional uses take place. So if somebody wants to see, let's say somebody bought some property in the township and they want to see how it's zoned. They, I guess they would talk to you and they not rely on the how, website? How or? it's zoned, they need to well, ask me. I don't but, think we have the zoning map on the website. There's a, there is a is zoning map. Okay, That's another question. Look at the map it's and see it's how very it. hard to read. I'm not sure if, there's, if, the, if the text isn't up to date. I wasn't sure if the map was up to date. The map, the map hasn't changed. For us. The only changes to the map have been annexations by the village. There hasn't been any changes to any zones. The R2 and R3 chapter? But we don't have any R2 in our Because it was taken up. Yeah, right. no, we took them out, but we didn't up. have any to start up. with. Yeah, okay. And then, we so if somebody read about the land they just bought, they, they couldn't depend on the website. So they, they could. If, if, they, if they're looking at the zoning map on the website, they, they can then it, to the best of my knowledge, <clears throat> it should give the correct zone for their property. But the text may or may not be up to date. The text will be up to date in 30 days. Within 30 days mm -hmm. of today or mm -hmm. when? Oh. Up today. Up to today. Okay. Let's check. But the safest thing right now, if anybody has a question, is to contact me. Mm -hmm. okay. the, you know, I had somebody just tell me, he said, you know, if you depend on the internet for your information, then you better be pretty good at discerning when that's, there's been an electronic error made or a human error because it happens all the time. You know, it's just like depending on the research you do on Google to give you an answer. It's, it's not the final word. Well, we, we will do our best to have our website be as accurate as possible, but as we just pointed out, there are significant delays between a change being made and, and getting it accurately posted on the website. But I at least try to have copies of everything that, you know, every decision that's made in order to provide that information and to do my job properly. So next, next meeting, I won't I'll be visiting my mother, and so if I want to read the minutes, I'll come back and make an appointment with Margaret to come read them. It doesn't have to be Margaret. Uh, don't want to
put everything on her. It should be Margaret because by law she's in charge of the minutes. It's her responsibility. Okay, but I mean, well, it depends on what minutes you want to read. Well, if I, if I missed the July 19th minutes, I'd want to read them. Well, you well, have, you'll okay. get to read them as soon as they're ready. But see, they when I make an appointment with you to come. Well, I mean, I generally, you know, I'll do the minutes closer to the next meeting. Like, I don't do it. I don't yeah, have to go yeah, up yeah, to yeah. my minutes. Yeah, right. And I have, you know, other things to do. And then and then the minutes generally, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then they're, they're approved at the next meeting. But as you can tell, I mean, the, the corrections that are made are generally don't affect the gist of what happened. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you just. But the you official just minutes it. don't exist until they're approved yeah. by the trustees at the yeah. following meeting. But you can certainly read over everything you just said. <laughs> so the July 19 minutes won't be approved until the August. Yeah, and that's whatever. that's fine. I just it, it's it's odd that a person would have to make an appointment. A, a citizen would have to. Make I have an to do. I have other things I have to do besides be at the office, office all day long. Mm -hmm. I can't. This is not a full time job. Oh, I'm not. I can't. So why do you think it's odd? That we, we, I just, I, you don't have to make an appointment. Just well, call me and say, can I see a copy of the minutes and I can give them to you. I'll yeah. bring them to your house. Yeah, I didn't mean to make this into anything. I just want, for the, for the general public's purpose, like, right, can I go see The scale of the operation of Miami Township is such that you can't have the availability like in a of library, the minutes like in a anytime library, you like want a, them. Like in a library. Just, just to be sure to understand, this is the total. Oh, I understand it. Employees. I'm not asking Margaret to be operation. there, so when I want to come over, I can do it. No, I'm but, saying, but could I, I go to the library and read the minutes? I, I, I wanted to go to the, the website's the perfect answer. They're not there, so. I'm not at all going to avoid getting the minutes to you. A simple phone call. No, it's not. It's a not simple a, phone call. It's my not home. About me, let, me, let me let me just say this. A simple phone call to my home phone. I will hear the message and I'll call you back and let you know when I can get some minutes to you. Do you live locally? I do. I can bring them to your house. <laughs> I mean, it's that it's, it's that simple. It's, for it's me. not about that, Margaret. It's, it's about can the public say hmm. Like I'm, not, I don't even think from talking tonight that I'm even in favor of virtual meetings. But I wouldn't mind say being able to see, yeah. well, the, like like on the website. Yeah, I think that you know, for example, you made a suggestion. The the, the minutes could be um, we could try to make an arrangement with the library to have the minutes, but. That means that you won't get them until oh, yeah, at least yeah. two weeks after get, the meeting. But if you'd like to know what happened at the meeting, you can you can get information sooner. Right. Just to make sure we weren't out of this yet. Okay. Oh, thank you for entertaining uh, me. And I can see uh, value in the long run of digitizing back a hundred years. You know, to have a, another record somewhere. You know, county archives, uh, Yellow Springs Library. Um, but I don't feel an urgency. Uh, we would have to get, and it would take a lot of time to scan the old minutes. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yep. But <clears throat> just so you, I just want to make sure you don't feel that uh, my myself, but being the minute taker and producer, is by any means withholding anything from you and any kind of. Timely. I mean, you know what I mean. I am not at no, all. No, that's not where I'm coming. Okay. Yeah. Good. I, I just want to make sure that. That's all. Just make I sure. don't feel like any that way at all. It was more more of. No. I know you just want to the library. It's, it, it was, it's more of if, if the public wants to see what happened, could they readily do it? Yeah. Other than just a phone call away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a phone call. I mean, I'd be happy. To, you know, even if you know you wanted to know the next day. What happened? You know, I could show you my chicken scratch. <laughs> or yeah, in this this comes this this is put on. This goes yeah whenever the whenever the channel five gets it together. Yeah. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <coughs> I move we adjourn. <laughs> Do I hear a second? A second. All, All in favor. favor? Right. Uh, <laughs>